Hi, it's last year. It's Diane. Uh, today is December 29th, 2020, and I'll get to the giveaway here in a minute because I don't have much else uh, to update you on, but I hope you all had a really good Christmas. I was in bed all day. I don't know. I, I got up and I was fine and everything, and then, yeah, but the kids had fun. I think their favorite gift, there were a number of favorites, but I think their favorite gift one of the older brothers found a Facebook, it must have been a Facebook marketplace. And he bought like 80 pounds of Legos. So, yeah. <laughs> and apparently they came in and sorted and everything. So, yeah. But, um, everybody else had a good time. I'm, I'm better. I don't know what it was. I have no clue. I had no fever, no, blah, you, it, but I just, I, yeah. So I spent the day in bed, sleeping. But um, I'm hoping New Year's is better. <laughs> so much better. Uh, my Marine was not able to come home for Christmas. Um, he's hoping early next year for a couple weeks, but we'll play that by ear because it's the Marine Corps. And that's the way it goes. Uh, my, I got a Fitbit for my husband, which I did ask. I mean, I literally put it in the cart. And my husband also gifted me a gift certificate to Stitchville, which I have not used yet. I haven't had a chance to get down there. But, yeah, I look forward to using that. So, stitching. Sorry about that. Um, trying to find, oh, here it is. So this is my only haul that I bought before Christmas. Uh, Hunter Gather by Rosewood Manor. I've had my eye on this one for a while. And it's, it calls for weeks. And I think I'm going to stitch it in the weeks. Because the, the color variation, yeah, I think I am. I haven't figured out, I probably have some of these weeks. So I can figure out what I need and and start kidding this up. I have no plans on starting it in the near future, but it caught my eye. She released it at market in 2020 and she's a brilliant designer. Love her work. Other than that, um, I got my threads of the month from both Fiberlicious and, which I think I showed last video, and Three All Threads, the nest egg. But that's all the haul I've, I have right now. Well, the other haul is a bunch of fibers to kit up a couple things that I know I'm going to be starting in 2021. So, yeah, I'm going to move you just a little bit. Hold on. There. Um, but I'm not going to show you those. They're, I think they're all gentle arts, weeks, classic color work kind of mixture. So you'll see those when I do those projects. I've been stitching on this one in Disturb Us. Lord by My Big Toe Designs. So it's MBT190 is the number of the pattern. They do number their patterns. It calls for general arts, and that's what I used. I the pattern calls for 36 count lentil <clears throat> by Lakeside Linens. I used vintage lentil, 36 count, and it also says on the pattern back in in this area that when it's stitched on 36 count. <clears throat> Excuse me. When it's stitched on 36 count, it fits into a normal roughly 16 by 20 frame. Yeah, a standard 16 by 20 frame. So I should be able to find one of those. I have some back there, but I don't know if they're 16 by 20. Otherwise, I go to Hobby Lobby. I like Hobby Lobby's framing selection better than, well, I don't like the Michaels that's near me. They're just rude. And their selection isn't that great. Other Michael stores might have better selection, but ours doesn't. And Joanne's, you know, the open stock frames is kind of a joke, at least at the one near me. Every once in a while I could find a gem, but Hobby Lobby definitely. And most of the time, or a lot of times I should say, the open stock frames are on sale, so you can get them at a decent price. So that's my plan for this piece, because I did not think I would finish this in 2020. I was 
wrong. Sometimes you get just in a groove with a project and you're finishing it. When I last showed it, I had this middle section of words complete and I was working on this band. And now it is a complete finish. If you've been following me on Instagram, you've seen this. But it's just beautiful. Um, somebody asked if the each word is different color. Yes and no. Like here, these two words have the same color, but then the next word is individual. And sometimes there's three words in a row that have the same color. I carried between my letters. There's one space between the letters, and sometimes you have to plan the letters out so you can only have that one space. But I, I stopped and started each word, even if it was the same color. So this band here is just beautiful. I, I just think that would make a beautiful drum. And this one up here would be beautiful too, as an edge. So I finished this two days ago. And it, it was weird because I thought, oh, you know, this border is going to take forever and this band. But once you get going, sometimes you just hit that stride of the project and it just it's, works. I would... Um, I've read this before, so I'm not going to read it again. It's by A Prayer by Sir Francis Drake. Back here on the, on the back, they give you the, the general color key list that we all expect. And there are DMC alternatives. I, would I use the DMC? Possibly some of the colors, but some of the colors, the variegation comes across really well. And I think it's worth the investment. You do you. But here it says, if you're going to do on 36 count one strand over two threads, which is what I did, this is how many skeins you're going to need. This is an accurate. This is very accurate. I think the one that I did not use the second skein was toasted barley, the bottom one. But if I had to frog at all, I would have to break into the second skein. I was that close. So um, in my opinion, it'd be worth getting that second skein for dye lot issues. Over here, it talks about if you're going to stitch it on 32 or 28 count or use two strands. So I would trust these numbers. I stitched it using these numbers, so I would trust the numbers on here. And it's a beautiful, beautiful design. Very nice to read, very... Well, there's two symbols that are kind of close. I wish they would have used something else. Uh, one's kind of like a... Like an asterisk with only four legs, and then one's a plus. I wish they would have chose two different ones, but in general, it's very easy to read. And the letters, it's, it's not the consistent alphabet through the whole thing. Because you see here, this H is different than this H. So you have a when here and a when here. And sometimes the N had two in the center, sometimes it had three. The subtle differences, but in general the letters were the same across the pattern. Uh, you just had to keep an eye out for any changes. And I think that was, had to do with the spacing to get it all. I mean, it's four spaces in here, four spaces in here. So to get it where they needed it to be, they changed the letters just a wee bit. But it's really, really beautiful. The colors are amazing on this. How they work together, it's just, it's timeless, really. But I did not think I'd finish it, and I did. So this was on my School of Magical Stitches, which I shared it in the group that it's not going to be, I'm not counting it for any challenges. Because I did not participate in 2020, but I'm going to participate in 2021. At least that's the plan at the moment. And this was going to be on there. Well, obviously it's done, so it can't be on there. Um, and it was also on my whip go board for 2021. Another thing I hadn't done before. But whip go. Jesse Marie called the first. It was funny in her video, she said, you know, I'm not going to draw space 13. In January. She drew space 13 in January. But uh, the two spaces that she did draw, so she ended up drawing three spaces. So she drew 
number 13, which is a free space for on my board, drew number 6, and number 18. My number 6, I think it's my number 6, let me check that. My number 18 is 10 Days on a Mirabilia, and I have two Mirabilias on my list this year, and this is the one I chose, Moon Flowers. I started this in 2016 as part of a January challenge. Where did I put the bag? Oh, there's the bag. And so I only stitched on it for one day. So I'd like to get this one done this year. So the, here's where I'm at, up in the moon. The fabric is 32 Count Ursula by Under the Sea Fabrics. It's an ombre fabric. It goes light to dark. And I put the dark at the top so the moon would pop. And then when the dress and it gets deeper colors on the lighter fabric, I thought that would work nicely. And this is, is this Lugana? No, this is 32 count linen, Belfast. So um, the metal fibers there, I just took sliver, uh, sulky, sulky sliver. It's a metallic thread that you can actually put in your machine, your sewing machine apparently. My sewing machine is right there, at least the one I'm using. But I just divided it, um, just to make sure I kept on track. Most of my mirrors I start in this area, but on this piece I started all the way at the top. And I don't remember why. There was a reason why. Yeah, because in the middle there's not a whole lot. I mean, I could go down onto her dress, but I wanted to start up in the moon. So, Moonflowers is number 18. My goal for January is 10 days, which for me equ is equal to about 3 hours of stitching. So 30 hours, between 25 and 30 hours on that. Number 6 is this piece. It is a Rosewood Manor. It is on 36 count Wren. I picture this plus. And let me grab a clip. It's a little, it's a little bigger than that piece. There we go. And it is called baskets. I am using the Baldani thread. The original pattern called for 28 count wren. With a, you use the thread as it come up comes off these balls which is three strands. I did not like it. I tried. I did. I, I tried to stitch this whole motif just to get a feel for it. I was fussing with every single stitch. And it's a sizable piece. I knew that would drive me up the wall. But it's beautiful colors. So what I decided to do and what I did um, was I bought a piece of 36 count wren and I'm using one strand over two threads. Because I like the look of that on 36 count, and here's where I'm at. So I have pages one, two, three, uh, four comes, yeah, here. Four is done, and this this starts going into five. So that's what I have done. Is that a number right? Yeah, that's what I have done. So down here is seven, which is probably the next page that I'm going to work on. I will say if you're going to do, Karen loves to use a whole variety of colors and it gives her patterns and her pieces such depth and beauty. I would strongly recommend you purchase a needle holder like this. I should put that needle in the right spot. I, yeah, these are, I didn't straighten my threads before the video, but a needle holder like this that you can put the the symbols and then have each thread on an individual needle. It is so much easier to do four stitches of one color, park your thread or uh, secure your thread, cut it, put the needle away rather than get out another thing and, and re-thread your needle all the time. Karen's variety of color, you'd be re-threading your needle all the time. So I would suggest some kind of needle holder thing like that when you're doing a pattern like this. And I also have 
Sunset by Rosewood Manor is also on my School of Magical Stitches list, and I it's possible it's on my whip go board. I would use it with that too. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, but the color, the fabric color is beautiful. How it works with these threads and the variegation in them is beautiful. So what I do is I cut a length of the Valdani thread, which is three strands. And then I'll hook the two strands I'm not using on this little plastic nub and I'll thread one into the needle. So it keeps everything uh, organized and I'm liking it. I just have to make sure my little hands help me. But um, that is number base number six. My goal is to finish that piece. I'm not sure if I'll finish it in January. I'm going to, I want to get at least a page finish in January. And again, WIPCO 2021, this is a by the end of the year goal. And if I make it in January, then I could block off the, the box. So those are my two uh, WIPCO pieces that I'll be working on, focusing on. And to be honest, Baskets was calling to me anyway. So that worked really well. But uh, that is my plan, except okay, Friday is New Year's, and we take down our tree, so that's what we'll do. But I have my New Year New Start, which will be Erin Morrison, stitched on 36 count Havana, I think 36 or 40, I'm sorry, 40 count Havana by Week Style Works. I like their higher counts. I love the colors of their fabrics. Their colors of fabrics are just don't like the lower counts of their fabrics. They're too dishraggy to me. I don't like that. I will be using the 103 spools, which I've never used before. So I'm today I'm working on, I have to zigzag the edge and that kind of thing. Except my LNS didn't have like three or four of the spools for the colors called for. So I'm going to use the Avera Soie alternatives. But those are the three pieces I'm planning on working on um, between now and the next video. I could totally throw that out the window, except the Ann Morrison. That one definitely will be started. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. But let's do the giveaway. I will ship anywhere. And do realize that these bags are probably going to be folded and I'm definitely putting them in a weatherproof you know, envelope thing. I will definitely do that. And I might put a little piece of cardboard in there. Um, I know, especially international, that might be required. I don't know. So don't be surprised if they arrive folded. They're all cotton. Iron with steam, without steam, your preference. Or, you know, it's a project bag. So let's start with the gnomes. The Timber Gnomes project bag. This one's a little smaller than my normal, but it turned out really cute. It's fully lined <laughs> with brown with like little navy lightning bolts. I did seal the bottom, secure the bottom so your scissors aren't going to fall through to the other side or anything. And I did the random comment YouTube, YouTube comment picker or whatever picker this sounds wrong okay and the person who won is this is your YouTube channel name joy Lisa joy Lessa I will comment on your comment but if you can get a hold get in touch with me with if that's not your human name um, if that's just your digital name and not your human name please give me your human name your snail mail address Realistically, my son's car broke, so he's down a vehicle, so he's using one of our vehicles to go to work. And weather, it's Minnesota. We had a blizzard last, two days before Christmas. We had a, a nasty blizzard come through. Uh, winds, like up to 60 miles an hour type of winds. And um, it was interesting. <laughs> it was an interesting evening. But... 
Uh, my goal is to have these bags in the mail by next Friday, which would be the 8th. Do realize that USPS, I mean, my brother-in-law is a mail carrier, so I, and I don't, I don't, I'm not mad at the, the guys who are actually doing the work. I, somebody somewhere along the way is mucking up things and it's not the people on the ground. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's taking them a little long. I mean, I ordered something in November and for a Christmas gift and it didn't arrive till the day after Christmas, but and I had something literally sit at my post office for two weeks. My post office is less than three miles from me. But if I would have gone in to try and ask for it, they would have had no clue what I was talking about. But magically it appeared after I complained. And I don't like to complain. So, um, yeah, somewhere along the line, something's off. And it's not the people literally on the front lines in many respects. So it might take a little while to get to you, but I will have a tracking number. I will ship anywhere in the world. I happen to know one of the people that received this bag and I know she's domestic, but if uh, the other two are international, that's fine. I'll send it. Rose bag is Pat Von, von Bright, Von Breck. Again, this is your YouTube channel name. You won rose bag number one. And my friend, who I have had the pleasure of meeting in real life, won rose bag number two. Sherry Burkett. If you've watched her marathon movie videos, at any time in the past, you know who I'm talking about. And uh, she's in Texas. So, please email me at lawn.stitches at gmail.com. I will comment on your comment. I will also have my email below and I'll have my Instagram below if messaging through Instagram is easier for you. But just give me your human name, if that's not your human name, and your snail mail address. And my goal is to have them in the mail to you by next Friday, the 8th of January, 2021. Because I don't know, the rest of you, I am staying up till midnight. I'm watching 2021 get here. I got to make sure that it arrives. Because 2020 has been weird. Um, good things in 2020. I should have had something. Um, we paid off our mortgage. Boom. That's a huge goal. Of course, it was before COVID, but we paid off our mortgage. That is huge. So that would be a good thing in 2020. Um, Health-wise in general, we've all been good, which is good, especially when you have a large family. My Marine was able to be here in February, so I got all the kids together then. I haven't had them all together since then, but I had them all together then. So yeah, I mean, 2020, with all the weird stuff, it's still not the worst. It, it's, th we, we have things to be grateful for. That's what I want to say. But I do want to wish you a new year, and may it be a happy one. Um, if you choose to, well, especially in Minnesota, you, the bars are closed. Governor Goofy has closed the bars again. Yeah, Dictator Walls has it in his head. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get on that soapbox. I, but if you choose to drink, get a designated driver, call a cab. There's nothing... You, your manhood, womanhood is intact. Um, I mean, we're wearing these masks, which really don't do anything. If you look at the science, it doesn't do anything. Um, the social distancing does better than the masks. We're all concerned about that, so you know, think of your fellow man. 
and enjoy your time, but if you feel like you can't drive home, don't have somebody drive you home or crash on a friend's couch or something. It's something I've been passionate about since I was a teenager. Um, I don't drink I, by choice, and if we were ever together and you drank, it wouldn't be a big deal to me. As long as it wouldn't be a big deal to you if I took your keys. So it's kind of my my preaching for the year. The last preaching sermon of the year. Anyway, I love all of you and this community and those who comment and it's so encouraging and so wonderful. And I know I speak softly, but I do speak softly in general. If you run into me on the street, I speak softly. Anyway, um, love to you all. I will see you probably in two or three weeks with a regular update video, toying with the idea of doing a whip parade. I haven't quite decided yet. I have 64 whips and I have several new starts scheduled, but in 2020 I had 15 finishes, I think, maybe 16. Because one was like a three-parter. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad, especially since I like big projects like uh, cross-hatch quilts. She was talking about that and uh, somebody else was talking that they need to start liking smaller pieces and I'm right there with you, but it's not going to happen because these designers keep putting out beautiful patterns. So love to you all. Have a very safe and happy new year. And, you know, when those January doldrums kind of come around like they always do every year, uh, reach out in the community. Try something new in your stitching. Try a new food. I don't know. But uh, my new year's resolution for 2020 was to lose 20 pounds. Done. I actually lost it. Not. 40 pounds or anything, but I lost probably 23. Um, 2021 is to lose another 20 pounds. Maintain my fitness. Stitch. Quilt. Enjoy my kids. I have another senior. So I, I look forward to 2021. I'll see you all in the new year. Love to you.